Hey guys, I am going to be all over the map today, guaranteed, because I wasn't even filming an episode, but some significant things happened yesterday, um, and I just happened to capture it. It's just really that important. Now, let's start off with the background music. This is Richard Scott Davis on a cigar box guitar he built, but he's using one of my blue slides, not this one, but that one. We're gonna talk about him in a little bit. Okay, so you notice anything? Um, no, I didn't get shorter. Um, my, see the hair? Yeah, it's can again. You know what? I got so tired of like 60 some year old divorcees coming up to me going, hey, are you Sean Casty? Are you Leif Garrick? No, and for the final time, I'm not one of the founding members of the Bay City Rollers, okay? But yeah, I got a haircut for the first time. They opened up, hey Karina, Karina's Barbershop, Active California, get in your car, go out there. You can look like Ken. And, and when you do, don't do that. Don't make a Barbie doll out of me and give me no money, right? Tear it up, Richard Scott Davis. Yeah, um, oh yeah, Mrs. Olson. You see Mrs. Olson? Yeah. Remember how sad I was the last episode when I didn't get the Folgers, when my last Folgers can, I went to Troy Murrah, and you love that song, right? Uh, well, guess what? Yesterday, I got a Folgers can in the mail because I replaced it off of eBay, and I got it so cheap, I can't even believe it myself. But anyway, life is starting to settle back up and the planets are realigning you know my life is so obtuse and dynamic that things happen and i just make discoveries all the time and i made a discovery today um and i'm gonna share it with you because this episode is really about secrets but this is profound while i was rearranging this wall anyway you got to swear to me that you're not going to tell anybody because this is another one of those secrets that's top clinical secret again theme here things lining up templates planets whatever but anyway i was up there and i figured well i gotta I gotta hang up mrs olson and don't try to steal mrs olson with the can doll because you see that camera up there that's a holiday flash it's a holiday flash that's the model and um yeah it is the official camera of beverly d'angelo in uh, christmas vacation but anyway i was up there stumbling around um, I didn't get a ladder. Instead, I used this this old stool. And now that I'm done, there's no padding on it. it it's just really hard, and I can feel it in my knees. And besides that, it's shaky. Mr. Safety certainly wouldn't like this. Anyway, it's, I swear, they must have heard me. They. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, too. But uh, uh, they must have heard me, because the minute I went in the house, I got done. I wanted a drink. And uh, no, not cotton mouth, just regular. Um, went in the house, and wouldn't you know it, there is a commercial for a stool softener. So, look, old man, your days of being hard are over. Okay, just so you think I'm not joking, I want to be really clear about something. This IA stuff, IA, artificial intelligence, is everywhere. Um, you know, if you have a phone like this one, I think you can trust, especially if it's embedded in the motorcycle helmet. But if you don't have one of these, I think the next best thing, and you've seen this one before, I've shared this one with you before, the simple model telephone. But if you've got anything other than those two, they're listening. They are trolling you. Um, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, don't forget to give me a like. I'm giving you so many secrets here, and we're just getting started. Um, but... Yeah, one more thing. Um, I like fan mail, but Carrie, Carrie, don't troll me. Do not troll me. Just because you're green with envy. Hey, this makes a perfect shaving brush. But anyway, Carrie, don't troll me. Don't send me this note that says thank you. And then you've got this. I, I can't look at this. You see that? Yeah, it's watching you right now. See, this is IA. This is an example of artificial intelligence. Anyway, Carrie, no. Do not troll me. And, and then, this Richard Scott Davis, 
Every contest I ever had, that's him playing the blue slide. Not this one, but that one. Uh, the contest, every contest I have, he wins it. So either him and Carrie are in cahoots with this IA stuff. But I finally, you see that ticket spinner up there? I finally retired it. This guy, he is the monopolist troll of contest tests, but love his uh, music. That's good. I don't know if it's him. The guitar, I just know that it's my slide that's really making the difference here. Anyway, that's enough shtick. I'm learning a new language. Let's hit the workbench and talk about template tricks. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. Oh, hey, we're on. Listen, sorry about the, the fake trip to the bench, but um, I got to show you what, we're, what we got going on here. We have another license plate guitar going on. There's a ton of them. I have cut out the neck. Uh, done the drop down for the or, um, the license plate frame is going to fit in, um, including how high the neck and fingerboard have to be up. And I've put the fingerboard on the neck that I made. So this is the context. What are we going to do to blow another one of these out pretty quickly? Now let's go to the bench. Okay, guys, I'm pulling the last two clamps off. I want you to notice that... This board that I use to protect the fingerboard is painted our favorite color, Chick Flick Teal. Now, there's a reason for that, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But the point now is I have to take my license plate frame. I've done a lot to it already. I put in the license plate um, bolt holders, um, these T-nuts, we've talked about that before. I put the floating bridge on it already so everything lines up. Now it's just a matter of putting the second board on the neck. Remember, I don't put the next board on the neck just yet because I'm going to run this through a fret press um, after I sand all this down, but once I put it in the fret press, when I've got another board here, it wants to wobble all over the place. So I'm going to fret the, the fingerboard before I run this through here. But anyway, the point of the matter here is we're getting to this point where i got to figure out my setup in the background is getting too crazy here. But I've got to figure out where everything is going to line up because i got to figure out where's my scale, uh, my intonation has got to be right. Where is the fingerboard stop and start? How high up is it going to be? There's all kinds of stuff going on here that i got to measure. And you know what? I've made enough of these lately where it's kind of like, hey, um, you know what? I've done this before. This is like Groundhog Day or Deja Vu. And every time it's like, oh, i got to make the measurement. i got to figure out where this is, where that is. Um, and then it dawned on me, every time that I do this, it's like I could have made a template somewhere and um, I could be way ahead of myself because every time I got to, for example, pull this out, my little square, I, I got to figure out when the bottom goes on this thing, how far in this is, um, how far from here it is. And I end up measuring this is 11 millimeters and then I come in about five millimeters and do all these uh, pre-drills on these holes so I don't split things out when I use deck screws. Uh, and it just turns into a hassle. I think I'm wasting probably at least an hour on every one of these things trying to remeasure everything. Okay, you all know that I've been fixated with Camacho 60 by six boxes. Ooh, it says Sun House there. Wonder why. He's the greatest dancer. No, we looked this up and, ooh, postcard of Lula, Mississippi. Uh, mm, New York Central stuff. Ooh, look at this. Lula, Mississippi. I wonder what's going to happen here. You don't need to worry about that. Anyway, I love this box. And people say, well, that's all you use. And they're talking about tone wood and all, all these other boxes. You want to remember, every time that you change the type of box, if it's, that's the neighbor's donkey, it's not me. Anyway, every time you change the size of a box or the thickness of a box or anything about the box, you are going to change everything about 
where your neck's going to be, where your bridge is going to be, and that kind of thing. So the real reason I like these boxes, including the fact that they're durable, and you can ring the bell at the county fair with one by using it as a sledgehammer. They're durable, and they make good instruments for on the road, but we're using coil pick pickups and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you're a purist, great, but... Ooh, look at that color. Yeah, that's it, too. So, anyway, I figured out after I made a couple of these... Wouldn't you like to have this? Um, this is the top of the original Mr. Airplane uh, Man guitar I made. To Papa Ken, yeah, she knows about Tammy and how important Tammy is to us. But um, Margaret Garrett signed this. But hey, check this out. It's the same size as this box underneath it. So once I strip the paint off here in the Scorpion creepy thing and sand this down, you've seen me do this in numerous episodes. I just put this on here like this. And boom, 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 I, get, I got the holes for my pots. I, my bridges used to set up this way. I know where the bridge is going to set. I know where my coil is going to be. And my signature RV sink drains go there. And it's just too easy. And you get so much setup done out of the way right away. You know that the bridge is where it's going to be. Um, and you just build your next standard size the way you always do. And everything comes right together. I also have templates for... Uh, the neck, how, how far it drops down, how wide it is. Um, in fact, right here, can you see this? Check it out. There's one right there for the hoodoo voodoo um, metal that we put for pocket protectors. Remember that episode I did called Pocket Protector? I'll give you a link up there. But anyway, templates are awesome. Now, you notice I got into coffee cans, so the next thing I did was I was smart enough to figure out after I'd built a couple that, hey, I'm going to need to line up where um, to cut the neck pocket, or we might even think about using the Mrs. Olsen can again to build one for myself, but remember this one we made? I'll give you a link to it up there. That lines up with here every time, and you're good to go. Um, the bolts, the bolt pattern, and it goes on the neck. You line this up again, see that mark right there? Once I get in here, I can't get out. You see that mark right there? Boom, put it in there. One, two, three, four, four holes drilled your neck bolts on. So, this leads to a problem though. The problem is you want to get away from this type of stuff. You got all these different boxes and you start getting real picky about what you'll use. Same size cans. Um, oh, look at that, all 60 by sixes. No, you can't have them. Oops. Almost out. Sorry. So it started off with a Camacho box fixation, moved into how to make a jig. Um, I stole this idea from Darren Dukes for cutting uh, scarf joints. And then we have the one for the top of the box of the Camacho box. And then quickly I figured out, you know what, the strings don't move when from one to another and the marks on the tailpiece. So we started building this kind of stuff where you can just lay this on a, a neck and then we moved into four string and I've got templates for nearly everything. String layout, um, tail piece holes, all that kind of stuff. So we've been building a lot of license plate guitars lately. So I'm going to show you what I've done here and kind of help you with the layout so you can get your own sets going. Okay, we're going to be working with a Sawyer box um, kit which is standard license plate size is a little bit sticking out um, you've got to cut some holes in your plate for things like the potentiometer and stuff but a lot of measuring to do but that's normal um, um, MGB has a beefier and bigger uh, box thing where some of the work is done over here for you and it's a bigger it's a bigger beefier body and things like that I love this kit by the way but let's go back to um, this one and remember there's nothing that you're going to do with this one that can't be done with the MGB kit. I mean short of building a guitar for you what they've basically done here is both uh, guys have given you a framework to say let's start off with and now you can customize the, this the way you want. Now you'll notice here that this is one that I built up. I put my neck uh, tailpiece all the way through. This one's not built for that. Um, I don't use single boards. 
I use double boards um, starting at about the 14th fret out here. You know me for that. But anyway, it takes quite a bit of work of laying this out to get this to this. Like one modification I make is I like to put my potentiometer here um, and I put my jack here. So while you're laying all this out, let's say that you want to decide when I put the bottom on, I'm going to put some screws on here and then I'm... I'm going to put them right in the corner. That makes sense. While I use corners, uh, so they would be underneath there, I really don't want that. Um, I might put them over here. Well, guess what? If I put one here, here, there, 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 and there, I'm going to end up interfering with my jack. You know, I use pin and jacks. Don't fall over, troll. I'm watching you, son. Um, but you can have all kinds of conflicts, and you learn those conflicts on your first one. That's what this is all about. So why do you want to repeat them every time you build a guitar? Let's see where we're at. It's time for me to put the second board on here um, because once I get this fretted, um, and so I'm going to need to know, I already know from past experience that if I put, I mean my, my second board is going to look like this one, but if I just put it in their stock size and put this on here like this, and put my license plate on it. Oh, there's a gap. This is riding up above. That won't work. I'm not going to bend my plate down. And then this bridge will be up too high. So I've kind of measured this out already. And I figured out that since these pockets on this box are already cut in there pretty deep, that I don't want to take this down to there and basically break the box in half. So what I've done is I figured out how long this needs to be, where it needs to be to be at about the 14th fret, and I've cut these notches. And they drop in just like so. And by the way, I've done this. I did this. I'm not an English major. But that lines up there. I slide. I don't have to slide it anywhere because guess what? I've already laid this out where I know the 25 and a half scale is going to put my bridge right there um, that I want my license plate to come in a little bit off the edge of the box like so and I want the fingerboard this high so when I push up on this everything comes together now I know all this to be true because I've done one before and made mistakes in fact a couple and I started building templates for this First warning I want to give you is this. You guys got any neck cutoffs around your shop? Well, look, there's a pile of it right there. So when you're looking for a piece of this, pretty easy to find. You got it laying around because we can't throw stuff away. We use uh, fingerboard cutoffs. Always got plenty of that around. Um, I use thin pieces of uh, wood that I buy at uh, the hardware store. Um, to make stuff if I need to um, Or you can take apart one of these boxes smash it apart using a Camacho box as a hammer and then this is how I make my Round pieces of my templates for my coffee cans, but we've got all kinds of scrap wood laying around but when it comes to making templates How do you know what's a template you're looking in, and you're seeing wood everywhere? Well, let me show you. Yeah, by the way, you see how that lines up at 25 and a half on my fancy Beverly Hills 90210 scale, 25 and a half scale. This is probably one of my first um, templates I made, but it works great. Okay, guys, the first thing you're going to do is anything that's a template, paint it your signature color. Don't be chick picking chick flick teal. But anyway, I've done a base coat, so... When I'm going through the shop, I'm looking for this. I'm not looking for this because this is everywhere I look. That's the first thing you do. Now, some of this stuff is going to be very specific to things like coffee cans. So anything in my coffee can jigs has orange on them. So I find where these are and I know because there's orange on them that they are for coffee cans. Of course, I got my scarf joint jig. I know what that's for. But then it starts to separate down into three and four strings. So I've got these tailpiece templates and where to locate the strings for four string and three string. So I've taken, in addition to my base color, 
and pop some green and blue and that way I can identify what that is. So invest in number one making the templates and number two color coding them so that's going to save you a lot of time. Okay guys the first thing we're going to do is put these to a side again these are for gluing down fingerboards and heel boards um, second board on the neck. Now I want you to po I want to point out to you I've made a couple things I didn't paint this side but what this is is it is a scale uh, layout not scale for in a nation but it shows you where the tailpiece is where the license plate is going to start where the front of the box is and finally where the nut is going to be for a Sawyer model uh, pre-made box so um, this is a match to a cover like this one so let's get some of this stuff out of the way and figure out how you use this stuff and how quickly it makes your day go okay the mess can start pretty quickly here um, there's a lot lot going on when you're building one of these and so the first thing I'm going to do is take this one and I'm going to put it up where the neck is supposed to go or the knot up there on the flat spot, spot of my scarf joint and then I can go along with a pencil and I can mark this off here I can mar mark off here where the plate goes that's where the neck drops down then I've got to figure out okay the end of the box is here and the tail piece is here but this whole part's got to be cut and drop down now I do that before I put the fingerboard on we've talked about this if this fingerboard is sitting up here like this and I'm trying to route this and this is higher it's like a teeter-totter you get a lot of dig in right there and you don't want that so the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out that my drop down for where I'm gonna route out the neck is gonna be right here and it's gonna go all the way to the end of the box now I don't cut this off yet because this part out here will help stabilize this on the router. So if you cut this down and then go to routing all this out, when you get down into here, you're going to have that same wobbling problem. So that's step one. So the next thing is I know how that, that this plate's got to drop down by routing out the neck, but how much? Well, that's pretty simple. Once I know where everything goes, I start at that mark I made right there. And because I know that the fingerboard is this thick uh, and my floating bridge height is X, by doing some simple measures with any straight edge, including one of these, I can figure out how far down I need to route this. And because I've built several and because they're all built exactly the same, because I'm using templates, I've determined, guess what? That if I set this on top of the fingerboard like that, because it sticks down a little bit below, and make sure that that's flush, I can take a pencil and mark that like that. So I have this little template that tells me how much the drop down is going to be on my neck again I haven't glued the fingerboard on but when I put this on and this on guess what it's going to be the right size and I still have to put the frets in here which is going to give me enough string height and I can always adjust this is all going to fall down I can adjust this up if I need to I can file this and grind this down if I need to but instead of doing all that at the end you're right in the ballpark by making one of these and using this to lay out everything the same at the beginning. So the next thing we're going to talk about is this. We've already determined a little earlier in the video that if I just put another, uh, just a, a, a standard thickness of neck board for my heel board in here, what's going to happen is my neck is going to be up above everything by about that much let me see if I can do this I'm gonna put this on backwards I got too much stuff going on here but if I put that there like this and pull this up you can see I got just a tad going on when I try to put my plate on here it's gonna stick up 
So what do I do? Do I take this and measure this and figure out where that 45 is going to be and then mark that and take that? No, I don't do it that way. What I do is I've got this template. You see here? I know that this is exactly where that needs to be, like so, to put the neck on. I know where it lines up. I know where the front of the box is going to be. Because remember, I have my marks. And you see this nice and level. And I wish my arms were a lot longer, but they're not. And then I put this on here, like so. And line everything up. And what do you know? Everything is perfect. I just have to slide that back a little bit. All these line up. And then, of course, I can take my four string while I'm right here I know that I'm gonna have two strings here on the tailpiece and two out here so I just move them up I can knock all that out three string I can do the same thing there and there see again they're color coded blue and green and chick flick teal so uh, you don't have any problem finding them but anyway that's how that works so what does it look like in construction well you got your piece of wood, you cut it off at a 45, um, sand it down, do whatever you need to do, and then you simply lay it next to your template like so. I'm losing control here quickly. That's all right. There you got a sneak peek at the next template. But I lay this one next to this one as long as the ends match up. Of course, these don't. But as long as the ends match up, I basically, look at that, see that? My step downs are perfect, everything's perfect, I just cut this one, and guess what? It's going to drop right down onto that box, and the neck that was made exactly for this box is going to drop right there. I line up the end like that, you see that? Ends are matched up, I can clamp it like so and there we go we're good perfect again I take my my little guides here whether it's a three string or four string boom boom uh, and I'm good to go now, not to short myself, I've made um, the tailpiece templates for um, three strings. So I just got uh, drill uh, small pilot holes there. And here's one for the four string. I move it wherever I want. I might want to put a nickel up here, which would cause me to put these here or something like that. So again, templates are really handy. Now, finally, let's look at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to take this off here. Now, I'm waiting to do this. So I can point something out to you here. I'm going to pull the neck off. This is going to be glued on here again after we fret this. Um, and then, make sure I got this out of the way so it doesn't crash the floor. I want, I want to point out something to you. Have you ever built one upside down? And how I can tell is that I've notched this because my potentiometer is going to be right there. And there's not enough room the way this is built out. Next... My pickup is going to be right there, my jack, excuse me. And I use those long pin end jacks, and they end up coming out here. So you really have to watch how all this comes together and there's room. But if you were to turn this around, it looks like the pockets are the same and everything else. So always make sure that you got your orientation marked out like this. So I'm good. If you look upside down, there's room for there. There's room for the jack. Everything will be okay. So now I, think about, I, I have to think about putting the bottom on the box so I'm gonna flip this over and uh, let me see here the that's backwards now but I have the jack here and I'm gonna have the potentiometer here and if I put anything here um, to hold this bottom on like so and let, let me see I would put two here and then two here no that's not gonna work because I'm gonna end up with a screw going right through where everything needs to be when the 
jack comes through right there right in the middle and boom i've got a conflict and you learn those things the hard way so you got to figure out okay i'm going to come in here off of 11 millimeters to here and i'm going to have them holding them on here so i'm going to get this out i'm going to measure halfway to there and then i'm going to take my trusty my trusty See, my brain's getting ahead of itself. It knew I was going to say metric, metric hater. You thought I forgot you, didn't you? So I'm going to take this. I'm going to put 11 is there. I'm going to put 11 is there. And I know these numbers already, so I'm going to put a mark there and a mark there. And then I'm going to look at everything and go, hey, you know what? And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to lay 11 out here. And here and here and here and I think everything is ready to go I think well guess what I don't have to do any of that because first off remember I'm going to need something to hold the whole thing together remember this the heel board this is the top again now when I flip this over how is this going to stay together well guess what there's holes right there, so i got to line these up and make sure that I know once I've got done notching them, what a hassle. And then i got to figure out, am I going to come to the middle again? Do I put this here? How far is it from the center to the center? All that. Nah. Guess what? I have a template. Look at this. See? This is the right side up. I put this right on here. And... Do I take a pencil? No, because I'm a time saver. I am going to. I need these, so I'm going to go here where the drop down is. What do you know? It fits already. Do you see that? Over here, I've got this. Well, you know, it drops right in. That's because the holes for this were already drilled into here. Okay? So now all I got to do is hold that like so. Make sure it's lined up and clamp it or just push down on it. And I can take my all one, two, three, four, boom, and I've got my holes. And then I'm right to my little drill bit. Boom, 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 boom. I got four holes. And then guess what? I've done this on top of this. Like so. Right? I don't have to do it on top of here. I don't have to worry about it. I just put one clamp on this. This is the blank board. Clamp that to that. And boom, straight to drill in my pilot holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. In a matter of seconds, this is set up and ready to drop down. Now, of course, I'm gonna have this painted or having the graphic I want done. I usually use maps on the back of my guitars, but easy money. All right, guys, that's really pretty easy. If you're going to build one or two of these things, you know, I get it. But if you're going to build more than one, which is either you get so frustrated that it either propels you to go into the future and build more. But I encourage you to um, take that scrap wood you got laying around and while you're measuring stuff out to get it right, once you find out that your guitar is going to work, before you do the final assembly, take some of that scrap wood and turn it into... Um, Templates they make it easy for me. I think I gave you a couple examples of how we might have saved it 10 15 minutes doing layout um, I want to remind you give me a like below subscribe if you haven't clicked the notification bell you get noticed um, Carrie my friend Carrie that makes the trolls um, Yeah, they're awesome when you look at them. They're rug knit or I don't I don't know Maybe I'll get into that and master that too, but until then, my friend Kerry, thanks for being a good sport. Thanks for sending this in. I'm going to give you all a link below. Now listen carefully. Some people don't listen to the end. That's not a good thing to do because the first person that makes a video and doesn't call it out, but sends me an email, posts that internet video somewhere, get me a link to it. When I see one of Kerry's trolls in the background, you're going to win a prize. And that brings me to the Vegas odds are on Richard Scott Davis, who has supplied the background music today with one of my blue slides. Again, not this one, but that one. See you next time.